Well, the days are counting down. We're just days away from the end of the year. And despite the chilly winter weather here on the East Coast, it looks like 2014 overall will go down as one of the hottest, if not the absolutely hottest year on record. Ominous flatline there. Joining us here in New York is Emmy Award winning meteorologist Bernadette Woods Plackey. She's with Climate Central. That's a nonprofit news organization that analyzes and reports on climate science. Uh, Bern, thanks for joining us here in the studio. First off, your organization, Climate Central, has said, based on the current trajectory and the limited number of days we have, that 2014 will be the hottest year ever on the planet. But there is some conflicting numbers, slightly conflicting, coming from University of Alabama, Huntsville, that says maybe the third warmest. Where's the dispute here? Well, it really comes down to how you process data. Now, what we're reporting is what we've gotten from NOAA so far, one of the lead organizations that gathers data and reports on it. There is still NASA. There is the Hadley office in the UK. There's also a Japanese Meteorological Association. And all of these take data in a different way, process it, and really try to fill in where the gaps are and where the bad data is. And that's where we get the little nuances. But overall, they're all telling the same thing. Maybe if it's not the hottest, it's one of the hottest. Is there a difference in the way that they measure the temperature as well, surface temperature, atmospheric temperature? Is there a better way to do this, to know really what the trend of the Earth is? Not necessarily a better way. They each have their own approach, and each tells us something different. The surface temperature data is how a lot of these organizations I just mentioned add up their numbers. However, the one you're talking about in Huntsville, Alabama, that takes satellite measurements, so it goes a little bit higher up in the atmosphere. So it's looking at different data. That's why you see different temperature differences. Again, these are very small nuances because overall, the story is still the same. We're still having one of the hottest, if the hottest years on record. Plus, we see this mounting body of evidence of all these hot years building up together in the overall record. Well, as we just saw in that little animation we had bringing us into the segment, it's as if the numbers just continue to climb and climb and climb, especially in the last few years. There it is again. And, and it was just bobbling there so minuscule a century ago. This must have climate scientists extremely concerned. Did anybody predict this, that it would be this bad? Well, this is why climate scientists have been concerned for decades now, because they're seeing this already. In a world without global warming, you would eventually see the colds and the warms bounce out, not only in averages, but in these records. And this one really focuses on records, this animation that we're looking at. But the thing is, even in the records, the last record, as you just saw right there, was 1911 for a cold global year. That's the last record cold. We've had so many warms that people are getting immune to the fact that it's another record warm year. So uh, that's why it's so noteworthy. Well, I've heard this joke before that it's almost as if the seasons have shifted. It's a white Christmas. So many people want that right now. Are the odds of a white Christmas going down with this global warming in the U.S.? In certain areas. It they is. are. But okay. still, we're still going to get weather. We're always going to get weather. And in some places, especially the northern tier of the United States, the depth of cold air is still significantly below 32, so when precipitation comes down, it will come down in the form of snow. But there are going to be some tipping points if we continue on this trajectory. Look, we're already seeing severe droughts in California, extreme heat out in Arizona. I know talking to my mother out there, she said the summer was practically unbearable out there. Besides for uncomfortableness and besides for warming oceans and rising sea levels, what is the long-term forecast? What is going to happen if this path continues. Well, we're going to see this come out through a few different ways. Not only a lot of people experience climate change through weather, but the whole ecosystem is connected and the climate system is connected down through talking about our oceans and sea level rise to extreme, extreme forms of weather. Precipitation is on the rise, heavy amounts of precipitation. We're also seeing the shifting of seasons, as you said. And while some people might say, great, I won't have as many cold nights, it has an effect on our ecosystem. i got to ask you this. We have not seen a major hurricane hit the coast of the U.S. in a few years now. Mm -hmm. And what you always hear from climate science scientists is that, you know, more storms, bigger storms, more frequent. What's happening? Why aren't we seeing these storms hit the coast? Part of the reason it hasn't hit the coast is 
the weather patterns the way they've been oriented, and we've been lucky that it hasn't, because there have been some major hurricanes out there. We're just fortunate they haven't made landfall in the United States. They have in Mexico. You saw the pictures over the summer and into the early and fall. And we've seen devastating storms in the Pacific the last couple of years as well. And there are small nuances to some of these types of weather that we see. There's ones that we're more confident. Heat, obviously, because of temperatures. Uh, precipitation is one we're pretty confident about that is on the rise, heavy amounts of it. But there are more nuanced parts to tornadoes and hurricanes and the way they form. And there's another area of active research and how climate change is really going to affect our jet stream. And if it sets up weather patterns differently, we won't have all the necessary ingredients to get the big storms, but the energy levels will be going up. Uh, you're in the business of trying to educate people more about the science behind climate change. And I got to ask you, every once in a while, you still hear people say, oh, well, it was so cold last week. Look at all the snow we just got. So much for global warming. Will that ever go away? I, I don't know. I have to tell you, my father says it all the time to me. <laughs> I'm shoveling your global warming, and we're still going to get weather. It's still going to happen. As I was talking about earlier, where it is cold enough, you're still going to get snow. But we're starting to see that trend tip in some areas away from that. And, and the thing is, they're still going to be cold, but it, it'll be less frequent. Real quick. 2015, do we have any forecast as to whether or not this trend will continue? If we do kick into an El Nino, which is possible, a small one, then that will add extra heat to our atmosphere. As far as the actual weather pattern setup, there's some, qu some questions on how that will affect the United States in particular. But if the pattern continues and we get an El Nino possibility, 2015 could be even warmer, you're saying? True. All right. Meteorologist Bernadette Woods-Plackey from Climate Central, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And coming